How's it going, everybody? This is Kevin Kring here with College Golf Local. Uh, I, it is my pleasure to welcome Neil Stafford, head golf coach of the Missouri State uh, golf team today. Um, Neil has been the coach for, for many years now and has put together a wonderful program here locally and right in the heart of uh, Springfield, Missouri, and that's where College Golf Local is as well. So we know a lot of our parents and kids have aspirations to potentially play for Missouri State one day. And uh, I just want to talk to him a little bit about the recruiting process, um, just a lot of different aspects to college golf, and just chat, chat with him about those today. So, Neil, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you're doing well, given everything that's certainly going on right now around us. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Kevin. appreciate you having me. And, uh, yeah, tough, tough times for everybody right now, but hopefully, uh, hopefully have a little light at the end of the tunnel now. Yeah, slowly but surely. All we need is that light, and then we can grab onto that hope and, and go from there. So I don't exactly. want to keep it too long, so I'll go ahead and get started here. The first question I have for you yeah. is, um, it's just about, it's a general question about the recruiting process, but uh, what does it take for a kid to be someone that you've probably never heard of before to somebody who's on your kind of shorter list of someone you're recruiting? Um, just what's that process look like? Is it emails, resumes, tournament results, just... Like I said, it's broad. I'll let you kind of take that as you want. Yeah, well, I would say in general, there, you know, at least for our our program, there's been many, many paths to to what that looks like from the get go, and you know whether that's been an email or you know uh, doing some homework, and there's just countless countless things that we as coaches are able to look at from rankings to you know with just all the all the availability now and the information out there online, but you know, there's been, there's been many paths. Um, you know, usually there's, there's some kind of connection. There's, there's a lot, a lot of opportunities out there. And I think, uh, you know, I think just, uh, th there's been many, many, many different looking paths to, to college golf. Yeah. There's certainly a lot of ways to, uh, a lot of ways to get there. And, um, you know, we can kind of, we can kind of dive into a couple of those the little details of that uh, a little later on. But one of the things I wanted to ask you is just what are you looking for in potential recruits? I know obviously everybody wants good golfers, all Americans, that sort of thing, but kind of to speak on your experience, what are you looking for in a recruit? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And might be cutting out here a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, there are, you know, really looking for the, for the best, to be honest, uh, you know, at our level each year, everywhere is different, but sometimes there's, you know, only one to three roster spots may be available per year. And I personally get, you know, close to 750 to a thousand in a, in a class inquiries, emails, phone calls, just putting those all together. So it's, um, it's a lot, but you know, I'm looking for, you know, when I go out to recruit, uh, you know, if, if I've done my homework, I know, you know, I'm going to know if someone, you, you know, is, is a type player that we're looking for. Uh, so just looking for some of those intangibles that you can't see on a resume, you know, attitude, uh, effort, you know, what, what's their plan look like? How, do, how do they approach that round that particular day? How do they interact with people around them? You know, all, all those things were, you know, that I'm kind of looking for intangibles that you might not be able to see on a resume. So, uh, you know, just putting, putting all those pieces together, and it's certainly not an exact science, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of great players out there now. And, you know, so much great information for these young, uh, young men and women and just uh, a, lot of, a lot of great opportunities out there. Yeah, absolutely. I, you you talked about some of the intangibles that you see out there um, out there recruiting. I know that there are all, all all coaches have little tricks for little things that that they're looking at. But I am curious: have, is there anything on a resume that is one of the first things you look for aside from a golf score that might you know reveal a kid's character, who they are, like you said, the intangibles of a person? Yeah, I kind of have to stay a little more general on this one, but you know, I think there again there's a lot of great resources out there and the the ping the ping college golf guide has for many many years been a great resource for families and and uh, junior golfers that are 
starting that process to, hey, how do I send my information out there? But I would just say, you know, for me, keep, you know, keep things simple, you know, maybe a couple paragraphs, uh, just telling about who you are. And, you know, I know there's, uh, we may touch on this a little, little later, but just, you know, brief swing videos and, you know, introducing yourself and, you know, but again, most of the correspondence I get, the, you know, everyone does a pretty good job with uh, putting their information together and, and sending that out in a, in a good, good email format. Yeah, and you just you just talked about it, swing videos. Well, I'll I'll dive into that right now. Um, how much stock do you put into a swing video? Is it something where you're like, if you see a kid swing and it looks beautiful, you're like, I want him. Um, you know, because I know I, I I feel like a lot of times the swing can tell a story of a player, but it's not the whole book. Where you know, if you guys can shoot sixty nine and have kind of ugly swings, and guys with beautiful swings could shoot seventy eight, and it's not the end all be all. Uh, are you looking for videos that are slow motion, full speed? I'm, I don't know. Just, I'm just curious kind of what you're looking at whenever you get videos like that. Yeah. Uh, those are all, all good questions. And yeah, you know, video is, is always helpful. And, you know, I would say the what some advice I would give is if you're going to send, if you're going to send slow motion, don't just send slow motion only. I would, I would recommend, you know, one, one slow-mo is fine, but I would send full speed as well. And that's just something I've kind of seen over the years. You know, I'm, I'm looking at, obviously you're looking at the golf swing as a whole, but looking at different things, uh, you know, just balance and tempo and rhythm and, you know, how it sounds and, and, and as a whole, you know, swing video is helpful. And, and that's certainly a piece of the puzzle. It's, it's not the only piece, but you know, there, there needs to be, you know, every coach is probably looking for something different or, you know, golf is, as we all know, just, there's a lot of ways to play great golf and, but certainly helpful. I would say, again, just keep it simple. You know, I'd say nothing, nothing over 30 seconds. You just need a, a down the line and front on for, you know, driver, mid iron, maybe a couple of pitches, chips, couple of putting strokes, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be extravagant. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I, I've seen, I've seen some kids, they, they're trying to get, they're getting lessons right before they're getting their videos done so they can get every single thing looking just perfect. And it's like, I just want to tell them, I'm like, listen, like your swing is your swing, you own it, but the golf score is ultimately what matters. And that's what, get, that, that's what gets you recruited. I mean, good golf is what everybody Everybody, especially in your in your chair, is, is certainly looking for good golf over anything else because there's a lot of ways to get in the hole. Yeah, your your swing is your swing. You're exactly right. That's good advice. And you know, I would also say some other advice that I would give, just general advice, is you know when you're putting when you're putting those swing videos together, sometimes that's your that's your first uh, impression to a to a coach. So you know, I would say just as as in any profession, you want to look. Um, look professional and look put together and, you know, just make sure that things are clean and, and the attention to detail is good. And again, it doesn't have to be long, but just, I think how you present yourself is, is very important. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll add, just add on to that because like you said, when you're getting 750 to a thousand emails per recruiting class, you have to differentiate players. And if two players have the exact same swing, and one guy's out there with his hat on backwards and gym shorts and a baggy t-shirt or whatever like that, there, it, it appears different than someone who's out there in golf attire because we don't play tournaments in the backwards hats and the baggy t-shirts. We're out there looking like a team. We're looking professional. So that's not the end all be all, but it's little things like that that I'm trying to you know, tell our kids and stuff like that is you try to find ways to stand out, make yourself different, make yourself unique, make yourself recruitable. So that's well said. I'm glad you kind of touched on that. Um, I was just curious, when would, when would you, and you can speak on this both as, you know, your experience as a player, as a coach, whenever, but when would you say is a good time for a player or a recruit to possibly just start packaging these things together, a resume, an email? I know that uh, you're not allowed communication with players until June 15th after their sophomore year, right. but if that's the first time you ever hear from a player, it, I feel like in my in my opinion, it might be they're already behind the eight ball a little bit based on whenever other people are reaching out. When would you say is the best time for a player to start this process of building 
a resume and communication? Well, I would probably have to say initially, just as early as possible, uh, you know, I think just that early as possible, you know, timetable is, is going to be, and you're right, you know, we are unable to have, uh, as of a couple years ago, a lot of these rules are, are brand new at the division one level. But yeah, June 15th, going into that junior year is the first time we can have really any type of email or uh, phone calls now, even text messages, uh, communication. So, but I would say obviously a lot are sending out information before that and identifying, you know, possibly some potential young men that would, that would fit down the road. But, you know, I would just say as early as possible and, um, you know, I don't think you can ever hurt by getting getting your information out there as um, you know as soon as, as soon as possible. Right. Yeah. Because I I just see a lot of people. It's like they wait. They wait until it's like oh now I want to play in college and they're a senior and then they're kind of behind. They're they're so far behind the eight ball at that point. Um, so I just want to let them know is like reach out when you're a freshman at that point and you know you're likely not going to hear back from a coach because they're not allowed to respond. You know, the communication isn't allowed, but just getting your name out there and staying consistent. Don't just reach out when you're a freshman and then wait until you're a senior again to be like, oh, hey, remember me? Like it's, there's a, there's a value of kind of cons consistent communication and just building a relationship because while you're recruiting a player, the player also has to kind of cast a wide net and also see what school is the best fit. So if you wait till it's too late, you're just going to miss out on a lot of opportunities that potentially exist. Yeah. And you're exactly right. And you know, really at the end of the day, I, I always encourage, you know, anyone interested in this process or anyone that, you know, is, is, is playing golf, a junior golfer that, you know, you, you can, you can only control what you can control. Uh, you can control your effort, your, your attitude. Um, a lot of times you can't even control to some extent what, what events you play on. I mean, golf, golf is expensive and, and we all, you know, have, you know, most have families and, and priorities, uh, you know, managing that whole, whole scenario. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can control your practice and, and the information you're taking in. And, you know, that's, that's the most important thing. Moving back just a little bit, you know, again, I would just say as early as possible, but coaches and schools, everyone's timetable is, is different. So you hit the nail on the head there with just staying consistent and continuing to send that information out, uh, you know, not every day, but certainly not waiting, you know, six months or a year uh, along that path. Right. Absolutely. Um, now I don't want to get you, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, tournaments that kids play. And I know you can't speak specifically on tournaments that you are going to be recruiting at or anything like that. But just kind of generally, especially here in Springfield, I've, I've heard a lot of parents and kids have the, they have the attitude that, like, they have to play in AJGA tournaments in order to play in college. And if they don't, they'll fail. And they're going to go play qualifiers or this or that. Um, but I also know a lot of kids locally, they grew up playing in the SMJGA one-day tournaments, which I grew up playing those. Those are awesome. I love those memories of doing that. I loved playing in high school golf. Um, just as a coach, are you – are you just wanting to see kids that are willing to just compete anywhere? I mean, are you, you're not, uh, you're not someone who's just going to judge and be like, Oh, I only want kids that play in this one tournament. You're willing to take anybody that's playing all over the place. Would that be correct? Yeah, I think you said it perfectly. Any, any kind of competition is great competition and, you know, learning, learning how to win uh, is so valuable uh, no matter what, what level that looks at looks at looks like you know just that that competition of you know tournament golf and you know putting yourself in scenarios and then continuing to get more and more comfortable with with those scenarios and you know it's again going back it's it's uh, it's expensive to travel around and and play you know you know, play these, a lot of national events and, and even regional and, and Midwest events. Um, you know, I think the cool thing about our area is, 
and a lot of places are just there's a there's a lot of great opportunities and but i'd say just just competing and getting comfortable competing and and you know certainly stretching yourself and and making yourself uncomfortable with the goal of eventually getting comfortable in that next next step or that next level um, is is very key yeah absolutely i mean i th i think that's that's the main thing i want to tell people is like you know get good where you are and there's no shame in playing at a level where you're starting to really succeed even if it's kind of on the lower tier but be willing to jump out of your comfort zone and be willing to fail because a coach will respect that just as much as, as anything else because they're like this is a kid who's willing to jump out of his comfort zone because you can speak to it I can say it as well it does not matter the level you play at in high school it can be AJGA it can be U.S. juniors it can be whatever it is not as challenging as college golf. College golf is hard. You're out there walking 36 holes a day. You're out there trying to deal with academics. Like it is really, really hard and it's uncomfortable at times. So as a coach, you're just wanting somebody who's willing to be uncomfortable and then embrace that because that's how you start developing kids who are good players, potential all Americans, that sort of thing. So I think you hit the nail on the head with that. It's just being willing to be a little uncomfortable in order to get comfortable with that. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Um, there's there's a lot of ways there's a lot of paths to the pga tour and there's countless stories of you know really it's just about getting better each day and and your attitude and your effort and having a plan and just trying to get a little better each day whether that's right now chipping in your basement or you know playing a playing a national event down the road right um, I want to ask you a little bit about whenever you're out recruiting at tournaments, um, what are you looking for aside from scores, golf swing, that sort of thing? Are you looking at the demeanor a kid displays? Are you looking, you know, like how they talk to a rules official? Are you looking even as much as like at parents and how parents are acting and behaving on the, uh, on the course? Yeah. You know, like I said earlier, just, when I'm out physically watching, yeah, we're just looking at, um, and I would say most coaches are looking just at the full picture of things we can't see on a resume, your interactions with people, your playing partners, uh, certainly, certainly your parents, uh, just, you know, I would say in a whole, just being, being respectful to those around you and how, I try as much as possible to get there, you know, before, well before the rounds even start. How's the preparation look? You know, how's the, how's the, how's the plan look going into the day? And yeah, I think, uh, I think we're just trying to take in, take in that whole picture. I personally try to maybe just watch, I used to probably watch a few more full rounds, but you know, now just, trying to watch four or five holes and, and, um, you know, just see, see what that, see what that day looks like. I, I would say a little bit of a coach's secret here. I mean, honestly, I don't mind seeing them play poorly, have a, have a bad round. How, how's that going to look? Um, I've played millions of rounds of poor golf and <laughs> our players, you know, our current players are doing the same thing. And how, how's that going to look? What's the response going to be like? How's the young man or young woman, uh, how do they talk about that round after the fact when we reach back out via email or phone call or text? So, um, yeah, you know, it's golf's hard. It, it's a hard game. And, you know, we all understand that. And so seeing some of those rough holes are, not necessarily a bad thing. I'm glad you touched on that. That was actually going to be my next question was if you almost preferred to see a kid play poorly, because if there's someone you're willing to spend time recruiting, you probably already know they're a, they're a good player, but you want to see how they handle adversity. You want to see if they do shoot 80, do they come back with a 79 the next day or are they a guy who's going to grind and shoot 71 the next day? Because in college golf, you can have two bad rounds. And then the last day, whenever your team needs you in this four count five or five count four format, like if you can grind out a 79 and help your team win a tournament, like that's the kind of guy you want. You want that kind of character. So 
I see, I've seen a lot of kids over the years beat themselves up because a coach watched them play two holes and they went bogey, bogey. And I just want to say, it's like, how do you behave? How are you acting? How are you rebounding from those sort of experiences? Because coaches, you, you know, you know, players are good, but you also know golf and you know, golf is hard and it's bad. Golf is unavoidable. We try, but it's pretty unavoidable. And it's just, like I said, I'm glad, I'm just glad you mentioned that the way you did. And I also want to say this, you know, and you, like I said, you can speak on it if you want to, but same for parents, you know, sometimes parents, they get really down on their kid with, with a bad round or like you have to go work on it. But I'm sure some of that plays in a little bit too. You know, if a parent's over here throwing a fit because their kid's making bogeys, that doesn't look great for the kid or the recruiting process either, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's, um, I, I have, my wife and I have two, two young kids, nine and seven. And, you know, so we're in the parenting world now as well, but yeah, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of emotions out there and, you know, you're, you know, as a player, you're trying to do your best and golf is, can be extremely frustrating at times. And certainly there's a process to that maturing and, um, you know, but as a parent too, I think we just, you know, need to be encouraging and, and, uh, you know, the verbiage of, Hey, we just enjoyed watching you compete today and what a great opportunity you have tomorrow. And, you know, but I, I know it's tough, but um, yeah, cer certainly just looking at that full picture and and trying to, uh, you know, just certainly evaluating is part of it, but, you know, building building that relationship well before they would step on campus. Right, absolutely. Um, I got a, just a couple more questions here for you, Neil. Um, yeah, sure. I, I want... I want to ask, this one came directly from one of our parents. And again, I'll kind of, I'll say this how they did, and you can kind of take this as you want, but it's kind of regarding walking on at, you know, maybe a Missouri State or some other school, whatever. But um, at what point should a senior consider picking a college and attempt to walk on versus waiting for a college to sign them? When is the time to stop waiting on that call? I'm sure that's just coming from a kid or a parent who maybe they're just not getting recruited or the looks that they would desire. And they just think, you know what, I'm just going to go to the school and walk on. Um, you know, I, I would tell them, like, if that's, if that's the plan, you know, at least make sure the coach knows about you. Like, it's, it's tough to just end up on campus and then introduce yourself to the coach and end up on the team. That's a tough path to take. But um, like I said, kind of talk about that timeline and walking on to any extent that you can. Yeah, you know, I, I probably have to just kind of speak in general, and I don't know every program situation, obviously, but, you know, offers come at, at many different points in the process. And, you know, every, every coach and every program kind of has a different uh, take or uh, roster availability. Uh, some rosters are limited. Uh, I would say at our level, most, I, I would say at the division one level, most are, you know, added in a recruiting type format only, but um, you know, there, that's not to say that's everywhere. And, Again, like you touched on earlier, you know, the, the families and the young men and women are, are spreading their net as well and just doing your research about, you know, how each coach, you know, operates and how each program operates. And, um, you know, again, there's, there's a lot of paths to a professional career. There's a lot of paths to the PGA Tour. There's a lot of paths to, you know, having a successful job and, you um, you know, just trying to identify those, those programs and kind of how each one operates along the way is probably the best advice I could give there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last question I have for you here. Uh, just, as I said, you can kind of just take this however you want, but what's just the, what would be the best or the number one thing that you would say to some kid who comes to you and just says, hey, I want to play in college? Um, what's the best advice you would give to a kid who, just, who that's their goal? Well, I would probably say – you know, again, you, you can just, you can only control what, what you can control. I mean, you can, you know, I've kind of learned along the way that, you know, the, I can't worry too much about the, the young men I don't get that we make an offer to and I don't get, they're more than likely going somewhere else and helping, helping another program. Um, you know, we, we're going to, we're going to get and add who we're, who we're supposed to have. I'm just kind of a believer of a believer in that. And then, you know, I, 
I definitely better be working and developing the ones we have on the team. Um, you know, and that's, that's the most important in, in my book, but, you know, I would just, I would just say you, you can control, you know, you can only control the things you can control and, and everything really for the most part there, there's a ton of opportunities. Like we talked about a little bit before the call, there's, there's so many college golf opportunities and, you know, you can control to most extent, you know, where you're playing and how you're practicing and how you're eating, how your academics are, um, you know, the choices that you're making your, and certainly your attitude when you're, when the lights are on and you're out there. So, you know, there's, there's a ton of great resources. You guys are obviously, you know, your, you know, your background is, uh, tremendous in golf, uh, junior golf, college golf, professional golf. And, um, you know, so there's, there's just a lot of great resources and uh, to, to gather that information and gather that data. And, you know, there's just so many things right at our fingertips now that, you know, uh, it, but it, it's competitive. It, it's very competitive and a small thing, like you said earlier, can, can separate you. So, you know, just, you know, make sure you're, controlling the things you can control. And, you know, I'm a believer that things are going to work out the best for, for your situation as you continue on. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's perfectly said. And I would say that's probably the number one lesson that, that I learned in college was I used to, you know, you, you wake up and the weather's doing one thing and it affects your attitude, but you can't control the weather, but you can control your attitude with how you handle it. And I, that's one of those things It was, it started as a golf lesson in college and it's ended up being like, it's, it's been a life lesson for me uh, going forward. And it, it's one of the reasons why I'm so thankful for college golf. I learned so many things. I grew so close with my teammates and coaches and it's why I want other people to experience that. I don't want all the, I don't want, you know, the golfers in Southwest Missouri to just put all their eggs in a basket to play at Mizzou or Missouri state. I want there to, I want them to realize there are other opportunities to go and learn and be a part of a team at the next level and be able to be 40, 50 years old and say you played college golf. because It's an amazing, it's an amazing experience. So that's the whole reason why, why we're doing college golf local here is we just want kids to realize that there, there are opportunities. There's 141 schools within 300 miles of here and the opportunities exist. And those opportunities are awesome and they should be taken advantage of. So Neil, I appreciate you, uh, you taking the time to come on and kind of educate, educate the, uh, the kids of Southwest Missouri here. Yeah. Thank, thanks a lot for having me, Kevin. It was great, great talking with you and uh, hopefully we'll, be uh, be together in a different format sooner than later. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you and you and the boys on the range here before too long. I uh, I certainly wish you and your family all the best and uh, your your team as well as we kind of are adjust to this new normal. And like I said, we get to that light at the end of the tunnel sooner than later. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks thanks a lot, Kevin. It was it was uh, great talking with you. All right, Neil. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye.